This book here, Impossible Lands, is a great place to jump into Pathfinder 2nd Edition. And if you're already a Pathfinder player and you're looking for your next great adventure, big or small, I think this video will give you quite a few excellent options. Impossible Lands is a setting guide that goes deep into a number of diverse and really interesting locations in the world of Galarian. Honestly, some of my favorite Pathfinder settings. It also introduces new ancestries, which we'll talk about in a sec, and new player options tied to the various locations and many thanks to Paizo for sending this to us to review. So what I'm going to do today is give you an overview of these areas and give you some options of pre-written adventures that you can run there if the location appeals to you. And if you want to dive further into any particular place, I'll recommend some other books that you can check out. At the end, I'll give you a little bit more information about the Impossible Lands book here, which I think is a great book to add to your collection. You can always check out the timeline below me to jump around, and we never use those annoying mid-video YouTube ads so you don't have to worry about those as you jump around. Now, I'm going to be pulling from other official adventure paths, some Pathfinder Infinite products, and Pathfinder Society missions, so you're going to have a lot of adventure options. If you are new to Pathfinder, the options I'll give you are mostly newbie friendly. You may just want to pick up the Pathfinder 2nd Edition Core Rulebook, which you can get for about 40 bucks online for the physical book, or for about 20 bucks at the Paizo website for the PDF. The Beginner Box is also a great place to start if you want a more shallow on-ramp and if you act fast, you can get it, plus the Pathfinder and Starfinder Core Rulebook PDFs and a whole bunch of other Pathfinder and Starfinder digital material right now through Humble Bundle for the best price you're going to find, and you'll be supporting charity. Assuming I can get this video edited and released before that sale ends. The other thing you should know is that the next set of Pathfinder Battles minis from WizKids is supporting this book. So whether you play D&D or Pathfinder, you may want to consider picking this book up to get the most out of those minis because there are some really interesting ones in there. And I'm excited because we'll be interviewing Mark Moreland for those videos. He is the head mini guy at Paizo. So if you've got questions on who puts those sets together and how they do it, let me know in the comment section down below and I'll ask Mark when I see him. But for now, buckle up because it's going to be a bumpy ride as we travel to the impossible lands. Before we jump in, our sponsor Hitpoint Press has a month-long Black Friday sale going on right now and is the perfect opportunity to stock your shelves and those stockings with some of the best TTRPG products and accessories on the market. Pick up my favorite third-party 5e setting and adventure, Humblewood, for 10% off. Get 10% off beautiful and useful reference cards, including animated spell cards, non-animated monster, NPC weapon and condition cards, gorgeous magic item cards, and the hardcover book from Griffin Saddle bag, and even Humblewood and Hecna mini STL files. And Hitpoint Press is launching their own TTRPG called Shift that I got to play a couple months ago. It is really fun and innovative and evocative, and you can download their free Quick Start beta today to check it out. And use the code BF2022 at checkout to get an additional 5% off of your order. We'll have all those links down below, and many thanks to Hitpoint Press for their continued support. Now, in my opinion, Pathfinder generally contains more mature themes than D&D does, which is why a lot of folks love it and why I consider it a next step game when you're getting when you're ready for something a little bit more complex and interesting. But adult themes are not for everyone. The content warning in this book speaks of genocide, war crimes, non-consensual humanoid experimentation, suicide, enslaved genie servitors, deep-rooted prejudices, a legacy of colonialism, and more, including breeding humans like cattle for the undead to feed upon. If you or your ga and your gaming group are ready to delve into more dark territory with your gaming, I think this book might be right up your alley. Big picture first. The Impossible Lands is a region south of Absalom and east of the Mwangi Expanse that includes a number of very interesting nations. First, you have Geb and Nex, two nations ruled by extremely powerful, nigh-immortal wizards who have been warring for thousands of years. Let's start with Geb, a nation of the undead, where the mortal and the post-mortal alike work side by side, and blood is the national currency. But 
Don't worry, the so-called dead laws of Geb give certain rights to the dead and the living alike. So if you want to be a tourist, go right ahead. Just be aware that if you die within the nation's borders, you lose your bodily autonomy and may find yourself resurrected as an undead worker on a local farm. Though there is a reason that Geb is one of the chief exporters of food in the inner city region. The undead make for some very cheap labor. Geb's capital city of Mekatar is a very active port city full of ostentatious displays displays of undead power, towering pyramids, and ominous cathedrals and colleges. And in charge of it all, you have the Bloodlords, made up of necromancers, vampires, liches, mummies, and wraiths, all competing against one another for scraps of power. All the while, the ghost of the Archmage Geb lingers. If you want to adventure in Geb, you are in luck because you have an entire level 1 to 20 adventure path that you can pick up called Bloodlords. In this adventure, you'll start off as lackeys for a minor blood lord dispatched to investigate some strange goings on at a local farm. Over the course of the adventure, they'll work their way through the hierarchy to eventually become blood lords themselves. This adventure takes them all over Geb, where they'll have to contend with not only a nefarious plot that threatens Geb's status as a major supplier of foodstuffs for the region, but they'll also have to navigate the complex political structures of the country because they're going to need allies among the various blood lords if they're going to be successful. But how far are they willing to go to make friends? Books 1 through 5 of the adventure are available right now, starting with Zombie Feast by Mike Kimmel. Book 6 should be hitting next month. You can also download the free player's guide at the link below the video, which is a great place to start if you want to see if this adventure is for you. And, oh my god, I have to show you the cover of this player guide. I need you to sit down first though. Okay, are you ready for this? That's it. I just, I just needed you to see this. Okay. Okay. If you want more information about Geb and a whole host of information about running an undead themed campaign, you can pick up the Book of the Dead. One of my favorite parts of this book is the archetypes. Your players will be able to play undead versions of their regular characters, including making them ghosts, ghouls, liches, mummies, vampires, or zombies. The Geb chapter of Impossible Lands also gives you new curses to cast, new magic items, and new spell catalysts, which are components that you can use in existing spells to enhance them. Now the country of Nex, on the other hand, is where impossible things happen. It's like adventuring in Arabian Nights. It was founded by Galarian's greatest wizard, whose name was Nex, and is now a land of absolute wonder scarred by endless war. The beautiful floating spires and the iridescent rivers belie a nation that is arguably more dangerous to traverse than Geb is. The countryside is beset by magical creatures and flesh-forged titans created and abandoned during the Archmage's long war with Geb. The capital city of Quantium was crafted, at least partially, by a series of wish spells, and is a monument to Nexus' staggering ambitions. A monument that is now held together literally and barely by a wish and a dream. Our adventuring opportunities in Nex are a bit more limited, sadly, because it seems like a really interesting location, but the very first Pathfinder Society mission, Origin of the Open Road, actually takes place in Nex's capital city of Quantium. It has a somewhat mixed review record on Paisa's website, but it is worth checking out. But there is another adventure that should be a lot of fun for you. The Ark Lord Who Never Was is another Pathfinder Society mission, Season 4, Scenario 5 to be exact. The PCs discover a talking skull with amnesia. All they know is that she's probably from Quantium, so it is up to the Pathfinders to take her on a tour of the city to try to jog her memory. Both of these are available on the Paizo website for about six bucks. Part two of the Arklord story is coming out in February 2023. It's scenario number 10, Arklord's Abode. The next chapter of Impossible Lands also gives us several cubes of necks, which are magical artifacts that can create some pretty useful and spectacular effects. You can also get some magical tattoos, some ooze-based alchemical items, and some new incarnate summoning spells. You can learn more about both Geb and Nex, the people, the people themselves, not the country, but the people, in the Lost Omens Legends book. 
Between the countries of Nex and Geb, you have Alkenstar and the Mana Waste, both of which get chapters in the Impossible Lands book as well. Alkenstar, the steampunk gunslinger clockwork capital of the world, is going to be the setting of my upcoming streaming game. It is a city that turned to technology and alchemy because magic doesn't quite work as expected there following the war. If you want to adventure in a wild, wild west clockwork slash gunslinging setting, Alkenstar is for you. And the Mana Waste outside of Alkenstar, uh, as the name implies, is a land ruined by arcane Armageddon and is full of unusual mana storms and strange mutant creatures, kind of like a Fallout setting, but less radiation and more unpredictable magic. Adventuring in these settings is easy too because we have a three-part Outlaws of Alkenstar adventure, which will take you as outlaws. You'll be running from the law, trying to reclaim your name, trying to reclaim your lost life, while also getting revenge on the corrupt politicians who put you in that situation to begin with. If all of this sounds exciting, you'll also want to grab the Guns and Gears book here, which adds the Gunslinger and Adventure classes and loads of equipment and weapons and other player options. And it further expands on the lore of Alkenstar and the neighboring Dwarven settlement of Dongan's Hold. And the Impossible Lands books gives you new equipment. It gives you a new animal companion in the Water Wraith. It gives you a new subclass for the Gunslinger, the Way of the Trigger Brand, which will let you specialize in gun blades like Squall from Final Fantasy, and a Shield Martial archetype if you want to join Alkenstar's Elite City Guard. The chapter also has cats. There are two more major regions covered by the book. First, we have the India-inspired nation of Jalmare. Let me quote the book for you on this one. Jalmare is a land where one can learn to speak with the moon and the stars, where flame and iron, wind and wave are courses of study for the devout and the dedicated. It's a place where genies dwell and wishes become wonders, where the elements are matters of heritage and experience, not merely philosophy. It is a land of curses and cycles where all things come round once more. The Jalmare section of the book gives you a Seru-specific familiar that looks like a cute little blue elephant right here. There are some cool new weapons and there are some feats for the Student of Perfection archetype from the Lost Omens World Guide. It'll further expand upon that. Self-plug here, but we wanted to do something a little bit special for the Jalmare setting. So we put together a Jalmare specific adventure book for Pathfinder Infinite. It includes three adventures from veteran TTRPG writers written and edited by an all Desi team to deliver authentic stories inspired by their backgrounds. All the adventures are level four. It is coming out in the next couple of weeks, so stay tuned for more. When it does drop, we'll put a link here down below. You can combine it with the Pathfinder Society mission that takes place in John Murray, namely uh, Season 2 Scenario 6, The Crashing Waves, in which the Pathfinders have to engage in a pitched underwater battle with some sea devils who are attempting to destroy a recently rebuilt underwater temple off the coast of John Murray. It is for levels 4 through 6, so you can easily combine it with our adventures in whichever order you like. Like most of the Society missions it is six bucks and it's linked down below and finally we have Bopan which is possibly the land here that is the least well known inside and outside of the game it is a small hidden island nation full of beast kin almost all of whom have been fey touched to some degree while most of them are descended from humans the fey influence has transformed them over the generations into various kinds of beast kin so it's a very beautiful fairy tale type setting though it has probably unsurprisingly, a bit of a dark history. The Bopan chapter of Impossible Lands gives us Bopanese dance feats, green watch feats for folks who are trained by the elite Bopanese scouting force, and some very interesting ancestry feats that you can use with any ancestry, but really should be reserved for people who are from Bopan or who spend a lot of time there. The ancestry feats focus on that fey influence and they are varied and wild, and you really should check it out. Oh, and there is a real-world recipe for a Bopanese Meta Cake, which sounds really tasty. There is a really good two-part Pathfinder Society adventure in which your PCs can be the first outsiders to visit Bopan in centuries, and they'll learn about its troubled history in this adventure. It is called The Perennial Crown, Season 1, Scenario 16 and 17, and I think your gaming group is really going to enjoy these too. So, the book includes chapters on each of these locations. 
You get pages and pages of lore and art about the geography of the lands, the peoples, its important cities, their landmarks, their cultures, their governments, and important NPCs your adventurers might meet in each location. They also walk you through a day in the life of someone who lives in each place to help you flesh out your day-to-day role-playing, and a year in the life if you're planning to stay there for an extended period of time, and you want the players to feel like time is really passing in a real place. As for the new playable ancestries, we get the Gorin, who are plant people created by a long dead druid at the behest of the Archmage Nex. We get the Kashrishi, who are a sort of halfling-sized rhino kin with some insectile properties as well. They have empathic abilities like Deanna Troy from Star Trek. There are two types of snake ancestries, the Nagaji, who are generally the have the lower body of a humanoid and the upper body of a snake, but not always, and they usually work for powerful Nagas, and the Vishkanya, who look mostly humanoid from a distance, but with some definite ophidian features that you can see when you get close up, like forked tongues and vertical pupils. They are opposed to the Nagas and have a strong sense of community and creativity. And finally, you have the Venara, who are inquisitive and mischievous monkey folks who live in the, who love mysteries, and they love pranks, and they love storytelling. And as always, you get pages of lore about their societies and their histories and the religions, plus various heritages and ancestry feats. Three ancestries from the Lost Omens Ancestry Guide also get expanded options in this book, including the Flesh Warps, the Tieflings, and the Genie Ken. There are also ten new gods and religions featured for your clerics and your champions and your other true believers, including religions fitting for those new playable ancestries. And at the end, we get a relatively small bestiary featuring some new creatures that we'll be talking more about when we review the mini set from WizKids in the next couple of weeks. You also get information on how to create mutant, ver- mutant versions of existing stat blocks. And I love the way they did this as like what they did with the cryptids in the Dark Archive. And this is very similar to that. And it empowers your GM to easily create creatures of their own that'll surprise their players and allow them to fit the story they want to tell. If you are looking for more ways to customize stat blocks, by the way, check out our Cryptids Expanded supplement on Pathfinder Infinite, which also gives you a guide to cryptid pets and a whole bunch more. It is a super fun and great resource for your Pathfinder GMs. I'll link that down below here too. Okay, so hopefully you get an idea of what this book is all about. If you are already invested in the Lost Omens Galarian setting, I have to imagine this book is already on your wish list or in your shopping cart or maybe on your shelf too. And if you're new to Pathfinder, again, I think this is a great jumping on point for some fantastic and thematic adventures, especially with our Undead Geb and Steampunk Alkenstar adventure paths. Impossible Lands is available now for about 60 bucks for the standard edition hardcover, which you can see right here, and 80 for the special edition cover. You can also get the PDF for 40 bucks on the Paizo website. And if you just want the player options and the rules editions, they'll be free on the archives of Nethys website once they get added in. A few time-sensitive things to remember, though. The Pathfinder Starfinder Humble Bundle ends really soon now, so check that out in the links below. And if you did miss it, they tend to do Humble Bundles a few times a year, so you can probably catch the next one. And Hit Point Press's Black Friday sale is one you don't want to miss. Get yourself some 5e animated spell cards, a whole bunch of stuff. They're the best. The links for those are down below. I'll be doing my holiday gift guide video here real soon as well, so be sure you're subscribed so you don't miss that. If you have suggestions of gifts for me to include in the video, please leave them down below. Also, don't forget we have our Jalmore Adventure book launching on Pathfinder Infinite really soon, and our Cryptids Expanded book is also a great one for your collection. For all the latest news and info, be sure you follow us on social media, which I have right here, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, assuming Twitter is still a thing. For now, though, Thanks for watching, stay safe, have fun, love each other, and I will see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. <laughs>